Good afternoon, Ms. Alcorn. Can I please have you state your name and spell your last name for the record? My name is Tiffany Alcorn. It's A-L-C-O-R-N. And what is your business address? 3511 Northeast 2nd Street in Renton, 98058. And what do you do at that address? I'm a police dispatcher and a 911's records custodian. And how long have you been a police dispatcher? Nine years. And um, what are your duties and responsibilities as a police dispatcher? Um, right now, I'm not a police dispatcher. I'm doing the two-year term in the records room. But as a police dispatcher, I handle uh, police dispatch, answering. I dispatch the police officers to any calls that come in through the 911 center. 
And so do you take 911 calls as well? Yes. Okay. And so you're saying, you said you did, um, you're currently doing a two-year term as a custodian of records? Yes, ma'am. And what is that term? What is a custodian of records? Um, every day I go in and make 911 tapes for court or public disclosure. Any calls that come in on 911 or records audio that go out over the radio is recorded. Okay. And so do you create some type of paper documents or records that are um, used in the course of trials or, as you said, a public request oh. disclosure? Yes. Okay. Do you recognize that document? Yes, it's a CAD printout. And what is a CAD printout? It's computer aided dispatch. Okay. And what does uh, what is how is that created? This is the original document is created by a 911 call taker. They enter the information like the address phone number, what they hear on the line, uh, and send it over to the dispatcher. Okay, so anytime somebody makes a 911 call, a CAD log or CAD printout is created? Not in every time. Okay, so when is a CAD log created? Uh, when a police officer is going to be dispatched. Okay. And are those CAD logs prepared at, any, at or near the time of the actual events? Yes. And is that reflected in those CAD reports? Yes. And is this done in the ordinary course of business of the dispatch center? Yes. And with respect to Exhibit 5, what is the date on that CAD report? December 24, 2007. And is there a time on that CAD report? 1713. And in uh, normal English? 513. Time? Okay, 513. Okay. Um, Your Honor, the state would now offer uh, Exhibit 5. Any objection to Exhibit 5? No, Your Honor. All right, 5 is Okay. <coughs> And I'm now going to hand you what's marked for identification as states exhibit number 6. Do you recognize that document as well? Yes, ma'am. And how do you recognize it? It's a CAD printout. And is there also a date on that CAD printout? Yes, ma'am. December 26, 2007. And is there a time on that CAD printout as well? 7.58 a.m. Okay. And was that CAD report pre prepared at or near the time of the actual, actual <coughs> events? Was created at the time of the 911 call, yes. Okay. And is this done in the ordinary course of business yes. of the dispatch center? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, the state would now offer uh, what's been marked as dates exhibit six into evidence. Thank you. 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 Do you recognize that CD? Yes. And how do you recognize it? I've looked at it before and my initials are on it. Okay. And so is this a CD of, um, what is it a CD of? 911 calls. And were you able to listen to the 911 calls on this CD? Yes, ma'am. Do you recall how many 911 calls were on this CD? Three. And were these CDs fair and accurate uh, recordings of those 911 calls? Yes. And, Your Honor, the state would now offer what's been marked as state's identification uh, exhibit 7 into evidence. Any objection 7, counsel? Your Honor, if I could board here. Certainly, go right ahead. Ma'am, did you retrieve these calls from uh, a system, or did you uh, listen to them in some other manner? I listened to them at the prosecutor's office. Okay, so they were provided to you by the prosecutor? Yes. Any objection, ma'am? No, no, Your Honor. All right, so was admitted. Thank you. And do you recall what date um, these 911 calls were made on? Uh, December 24th, 2007. And do you recall the time of these 911 calls? 5.13. And did you listen to every call on this CD? Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to exhibit number 5, I believe that first CAD report that we had. Mm -hmm. And Your Honor, may I publish this to the jury? Certainly.
that has out there? Yes. Okay. Members of the jury, can you see that? Sure. Yeah, I see that. Okay. So, Ms. Alcorn, going back to this Exhibit 5, does it, and you previously said that it was created on 513, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then, um, does it indicate on this document what the source of the call is? It's a 911 call from a residence. And I'm going to give you a pointer here. So where does it have the residence location? Up here. And what is that location? 1806 346th Avenue Northeast. Okay. And is there also a name associated with this address? Yes. Wayne Anderson. Okay. And so with this first <coughs> call, you said it was a 911 hang-up call, correct? Yes. And what exactly is a 911 hang-up call? Uh, it means that the line was open, or we had an open line from a 911 at a residence. Before it hung up, we heard some sort of noise on the line. Okay, and is that indicated on this document here? Yes. And where is that indicated? Uh, the type code up here is a 911 hang up, okay. and then there's some comments down below, oops, sorry, in here about what was heard on the line before the disconnect. Okay. And now, are there efforts documented on this document? Are there efforts to call back at that same residence? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and where are those? There's one here. And what time is that at, the first call back? 5.15. Okay. And the one down here at 5.21. Okay. And does this document also indicate whether any officers or deputies were dispatched? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what time did were these deputies dispatched? They were dispatched at 5.19. Okay. And what time did the officers, does it indicate on this document, arrive actually at the location? At 5.45. Now, based on this document, do you know what information was provided to those officers? I don't know what was provided to them. I just know what it reads on the detail. Okay. So now if we could go to the 911 calls. And Your Honor, may I publish this to the jury? Certainly. Go right ahead. This is State's Exhibit number 7. So the first call was made at 513, is that correct? Yes. time that the call came in was at 7, or I'm sorry, 513, and the detail was entered at 514, but I don't know how long the actual call was. Okay. And then this next call. detail that should be the second callback because this the first callback says that a voicemail was left okay or so a message was left on this document it says on here that a message was left on callback and then down here it says that it was still voicemail so I think that maybe they're out of order okay so the the second 
callback is what we just heard, and that was done at 521, correct? Yes, ma'am. Oh, here's the last callback. Based on this document, when was the 911 call created? 7:58. And what time? Uh, what day? December 26, 2007. And where is was this 911 call? Where did it come from? 1806 430. I'm sorry, 346 Avenue Northeast. Okay. And is there also a name associated with this 911 call? There's two different names on here. The name of the homeowner, Wayne Anderson. In the name of a reporting party, Linda Feely. Linda Feely? Yes. Okay. And I'm just going to ask you one more question again about exhibit number five. Down here, Ms. Alpern, there's this box that says contact info. Yes. And then we have another box that says contact. You see that? Yes. No, it says yes in that box. Does that mean that somebody was actually contacted? No. And what does that mean then? It means that it is expected or believed that there should be somebody at the residence that should be available for contact. Okay. And even though that's marked yes, it, it just basically does that mean there needs to be more contact with the house and that's why dispatch is sent? Yes. Okay. And um, now, with this call, it says that the, the name associated is Wayne Anderson. Does that mean that Wayne Anderson actually made the call? No. And so the name that's associated with the address Wayne Anderson, is that the name that's associated with the landline at the house? Yes, ma'am. Uh, those are all the questions I have, Your Honor. Thank you. And cross-examination, counsel? No questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you very much for being here. Thank, thank you. Have a good day. Is it to you or to her? Sorry. The pointer? I can take that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the state's next witness. <coughs> soft-spoken, so I may have to have you speak into that microphone if that's all right. Okay. If I could have you state your full name, <sighs> spell your last name for the record. Mary Victoria Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. Do you have a mailing address or a business address that you can give us? I do. 
So, P.O. Box 5, Snoqualmie, Washington, 98065. Ms. Anderson, I'm going to ask you some questions about uh, your mom and dad and your brother. First of all, let me ask you, um, who, are the names, who are the names of your parents? Wayne Scott Anderson, Judith Elaine Anderson. Um, were you here earlier when I uh, gave the opening statement in this case? <clears throat> yes. Did you hear me? I mentioned something about the fact that Wayne Anderson uh, may have adopted you at, at some point. Yes. Can you tell the jury then a little bit about your, your dad and, and how it is you came to live with him? Oh. oh. Actually, my mom and dad were high school sweethearts, and um, they married when I was five, and my dad wanted my name to be his last name, so he legally adopted me. Um, I actually remember <laughs> five years old. Um, and the judge asked me, do you want him to be your dad? And I said, yes, you bet. And tell us uh, um, about your mom. <sighs> the most beautiful person inside and out. Your, your Honor, at this point I would have to interpose an objection to the, to the form of the question. I don't think it's <sighs> for inadmissible evidence. Let me, ask you a, let me ask you in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us uh, a bit like, of what you know about your mom in terms of um, how long was she married to your dad? Well, since I was five. I'm pushing 50. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask that question. Uh, and uh, where did your dad work? Um, in Boeing. And do you know or do you recall what he did at Boeing? My dad is an, was an engineer. How long, how long did he work for Boeing? Oh, 27 years. And um, when you lived, uh, did you always live in the Carnation area yourself at, the, at, the, at their home? Uh, there was a time when I, I did not live there. I was back and forth a year here, a year there. But I was always butting in. Is that what you mean, always around? Yeah, I just Involved. want to know how familiar are you with the, with the, the, the home that's shown in the photographs that we've seen oh, earlier today? Oh, yes. That, I consider that was my home. Do you know how long it is that your, that your father, Wayne, and your mother, Judy, lived in that home? We moved up here in 1980. So I think. And when you <coughs> moved up here, where did you move up here from? California. I grew up in Simi Valley, California. So you moved up here in, in 1980 or so? Yes. Um, Tell me about other siblings that you might have had. Uh, do you have a brother? Yes. What was his name? <clears throat> Scott Russell Anderson. Do you remember what year Scott was born? Oh, October 24th. I can't think of the exact could be. October 24th. Scott's no longer with us. And the reason I ask you that, do you remember, do you know how, approximately how old he was when he passed away? My brother, 32. And uh, tell us, where did Scott uh, grow up? Did he grow up in Simi Valley as well, or, or up here in Kingdom? Uh, well, most of it would have been up here. He was born in California. Uh, do you know where he went to high school? Cedar Crest. And do you know what kind of things he did in high school? Was uh, sports and things like that. You know, objection or relevance? Football. Oh. I'm going to move oh. the objection the last answer stands. Go ahead. Um, do you know what Scott did after high school? Uh, he was in, oh, he did a lot of things, construction. How about college? Uh, he received a four-year scholarship for football. Um, uh, and did you, uh, did you hang out with him a lot, or was he a bit younger than you as you were growing up? Uh, as we were growing up, I did play with my brother. Um, what do you mean? Did I hang out with them? Well, did you guys live in the same household? I don't know. Yes, quite how, how yes, we did. Were. Yes. Um, let me ask you about uh, um, a woman by the name of Erica. Yeah. Yes. How do you know Erica Anderson? Uh, er Erica was my brother's first love, only love. And did they ever get married? Yes, they did. They were together close to seven years, 
dating and then married. Did they have any children? Oh, yes. And the names of their children? Uh -huh. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, er, uh, Olivia and Nathan. Do you know how old Olivia and Nathan were? Five. And little Nathan was a year older than my youngest child. I believe he was three. Let me ask you, uh, we talked about your brother Scott. I need to ask you about whether you have a sister named Michelle. Yes. And do you, do you know, or do you recall, how much older than Michelle are you? I believe uh, ten years. Um, is your sister Michelle in court today? Yes, she is. And for the record, could I ask you to describe where she's seated and what she's wearing today? Um, she's to the this is just for purposes of the right. To the right side of you. And what is she dressed in today? Um, I, I believe a burgundy blouse or a white color blouse. Could be wrong. The record could reflect on that the witness has identified the defendant as Anderson. Thank you. Um, let me. <clears throat> Ms. Anderson, I'm going to hand you what's been marked for identification as state's exhibit number eight. I'm going to ask you if you can to look through those. Don't disclose them to, uh, to anyone yet because they haven't been admitted as exhibits. But if you could take a peek at those and just tell me generally whether you recognize the images as <coughs> state's exhibit number eight. Yes, this is my dad. That's the first slide then? Or the first picture? Yes. Uh, you tell us this, the second photo. Can I turn it over? Yes. Take my show. This is my mom. Okay. The third photograph? My brother. And would you be your brother Scott? My brother Scott. The fourth photograph. This is Erica. The next photograph? Olivia. And the photograph after that photograph of the show. Oh, little Nathan. And then the final photograph of the show. That's all of them. That's all of them. Sanjin, can I ask you, are those fair and accurate photographs or representations of how they looked um, back in 2007 or? Oh, yes. 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 Yasi would offer what's been marked for identification as his exhibit number two. Any objection? Any objection? So the stated. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> record we're looking at state's exhibit a and the first slide and uh, the jury hasn't had a chance to see this yet formally from miss anderson so if i could have you describe for the record who it is we're looking at in this in this photograph this is my dad this is wayne scott anderson do you know approximately when this picture might have been taken oh how was it boeing it looks like um hmm. Been a year before. <coughs> it might have been a year before this. See, this all happened. Yes. Okay. If we can take a look at the second photograph. Uh, there's my mom. Your mom's Judy. Judy. Yes. And uh, this looks like it's taken in the same part of the same pose as that first photograph. Does that look about right? Yes, it is. So taken about the, at the obviously at the same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we could look at the third photograph. And describe for the jury. Oh, there's my, that, that's Scott, my brother. Do you know when this photograph was taken by any chance? Oh, it's pretty, pretty recent, so, yeah. Why, why do you say that? How do you, know, how do you know it to be pretty recent? If his beard was a little longer, he might have shaved it. Pardon that, me? That's, can you repeat that now? I'm sorry. Oh, it, it's pretty that's what he looked like before they killed everybody. Okay.
could see the next photograph. And tell, that, tell us for the record who this is. That's Erica. And that's Scott's wife? Oh, yes, yes. That's my brother's wife. The next photograph. And tell us Olivia. for the record who this is. That's Olivia. Do you know when this photograph might have been taken? I don't know the exact date. Uh, she was young. She was about three there. Okay. Three and four. And then the next photograph. About three, I think she is. Nathan. And do you know when uh, this photograph might have been taken? Oh, probably around two. Like and then the, the, the final slide. Is this uh, just yes. a big collection or collage of the previous photographs that we've seen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm going to ask you uh, a couple of questions about uh, Christmas time 2007, if I might. All right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you if you had contact with your mom on the day before Christmas Eve, December 23rd, 2007. Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. Can you tell the jury what, what kind of contact you had with your mom? Oh, it was over the phone. Um, did you call her? Did she call you, or do you remember? Oh, I'm not sure right now. Okay. I'm not sure. I might have. I want to say I called her, but I don't. Okay. I'm not sure. But yeah. When you called her, do you know where she was? I do. I do. She was at Target in Issaquah. Okay. How do you know that? Well, she told me. Okay. They were Christmas shopping. Okay. When you say they were Christmas shopping, who do you mean by they? Who was Christmas shopping? Yeah, this, uh, Michelle. I'm sorry, who's your mother Christmas shopping with? Well, Michelle. Okay. How do you know that? Well, Michelle was in the background and she hadn't really answered any of my calls. And she had asked my mom if I was going to be there tomorrow. Okay. How do you, how do you I know? I heard her. I'm listening to her okay. through the phone, and I said, yes, Mom, tell her. Of course, I'll be there. And she was apologizing for ignoring my calls, and I told her, that's okay. I love her. Tell her I love her. Okay. <laughs> so let me back up, just if we could. You mentioned you hadn't had contact with Michelle Anderson in some time. How, about how much time had passed since you had contact? Close to three months, she was ignoring me. When you talked with her, or when you talked with your mother on the day before Christmas Eve, 2007, did you say you actually could hear your sister's voice in the background? Yes. And did you recognize that to be her voice? Oh, yes. Yes. That, this is going to sound maybe too obvious, but how do you know it was her voice? I know my sister. I used to love her. And you mentioned that there was, a part of the conversation was about whether you were going to be somewhere on Christmas Eve? Whether you were going to be there, you said, something like that? Yes, I planned on being there. And let me ask you this. When you say you plan on being there, where is it that you, that you're, that you meet? My mom and dad's. Okay. What were the plans then for Christmas Eve with your mom and dad? We, we would all, what were the plans? We, get, we would be together for Christmas. Okay. Was that something that you traditionally did, or was this something unusual? No, that was traditional. Okay. And, and were you planning on being at your mom and dad's home on Christmas Eve 2007? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, how did the subject come up where Michelle Anderson asked if you were going to be there in particular? In other words, here's what I'm asking. Did your mom ask you that, or did you hear Michelle Anderson ask? I heard Michelle ask, is Mary going to be there? Oh, oh, oh. Go ahead and finish your answer. I'm sorry, go ahead and finish. I heard Michelle, is Mary going to be there? And I said, tell her, yes, I'll be there. Okay. And you mentioned that that's when you said something about um, she apologized. She did. And what did she apologize for? She wasn't answering my phone calls. I was leaving messages on her home phone. Ms. Anderson, may I ask you, uh, 
Did you go to your parents' home on Christmas Eve 2007? No. And why not? I was sick. My younger son and I, we were getting sick. We didn't want to spread our germs. <coughs> We need to take a break. We can take a break. I'm okay. Sure. Yeah. Get it here. Can I ask you if? Um, Excuse me. Pardon? Yes. Go ahead. Can I ask you if, if, in talking to your sister, at the time when you were talking to her, in the months uh, prior to the three months before Christmas 2007, did she ever express to you that she would harm her parents? There was an incident. Yes. And could you describe for the jury what that was? Oh, excuse me. Sorry. No. Uh, we were coming back from Monroe and uh, driving say, in my truck. When you say we, who are you referring Michelle to? Michelle and I. Okay. And I don't know our whole conversation, but she, she flipped out. She got really upset, angry. She says, I hate them. I hate Mom and Dad. I hate Scott. Ah, I just want to kill him, and I don't remember everything else. Don't tell Mom. Don't tell Mom. And I said, I won't. Of course, later that day, that was the first thing I did. What was the first thing I you told did? my mom exactly what she said. Did you, did you take her seriously when she said it? I, no, not really. I, no, of course. Who thinks somebody you grew up with and you love is going to slaughter your whole family? Do you recall? And yourself. <laughs> do you recall what it was oh. that prompted or provoked Michelle Anderson to make that statement as you were driving with her? No, I don't. I don't. Because we were I, so close. I didn't do anything to upset her. No, I don't. Did Michelle Anderson ever talk to you about your father's will and whether Scott should remain in it or should be out there of it? There was something in this conversation. I don't remember exactly, but it, it, was, it was just off the wall, crazy. Okay. And, and was that the same conversation yes. you were talking about? Yes. And you recall the gist of what it was she said about Scott and your father's will? I don't remember exactly right now. <clears throat> Did Michelle Anderson ever talk to you about whether your parents wanted her and Joseph McEnroe to pay rent. Yes, they did. Tell the jury about that conversation. Well, my mom and I were had talked about it you know, quite I a bit. An object on two grounds. One is hearsay and two is not responsive. Um, I'm going to sustain the objection and rephrase the question and strike that last answer. Thank you. And the jury to disregard me. Go ahead and shrink it. You okay? Yeah. Let me ask a question uh, maybe a little bit different. Did you and Michelle Anderson, your sister, did you talk, to, uh, did she talk to you about her parents, your parents wanting her and Joseph McElroy to pay rent? I don't recall Michelle and I talking about it. Did you talk with your mom, with Judy Anderson, about any intention that she had to ask Michelle Anderson and Joseph McElroy to pay rent? Yes, my mom and I talked about it. And when, to give us the context of when that conversation took place. Well, my mom and I talked all the time. Um, I don't have an exact date, but... In relation to uh, when all of the events happened of December, uh, of Christmas Eve 2007, was it a year before, a month before, a week before? Do you have a recollection of what it was you and your mother would have talked about? Oh. Yes, yeah, well, it was probably part of why Michelle had flipped out. Um, 
Mom said they were going to make them start paying rent. Yes. This is a problem with impression with respect to future course of action. This is not offered for the truth. No, no. Staying the objection, I think perhaps you could just rephrase the question because I think she's talking about the trip that she came back from Monroe. So it's, it's a little confusing it's exactly what we're talking about. No, no, no. So, Ms. Anderson, if I might, um, when you talked with your mother about whether she and, and your father were going to ask Michelle Anderson and Joseph McElroy to pay rent, was that part of this trip from Monroe? Let me, let me ask this a different way. Uh, I thought that you, you told us a few moments ago that you had a trip from Monroe with your sister, Michelle, and she talked about wanting, wanting to kill your parents. Yes. When you talked with your mother about this, that wasn't, was that part of the same trip, or was this no, a different conversation? No, that it, this is separate. Do you remember when it was approximately you might have had that conversation with your mom? Uh, well, I guess... Uh, you, you don't have to be, if you can't I don't be, know exact, but I know that was going to happen. How, um, how do you know that? Mom and I talked about it. They had lived there a year. It was basically to help Michelle learn to stand on her own you two feet. Object yourself. I'm going to overrule the objection. The answer stands. Next question, Mr. Thank you. <clears throat> Did you ever talk to your father about that subject of having Michelle and Joe pay rent? No. No. Did, did you ever um, know Joe, Joseph McEnroe? Yes. You met him? Yes. And how much time did you spend around him? Not a lot. Not a lot of time. In what context would you have met him? At their at their home, at your parents' home, or somewhere else? Um, I had spent time with Michelle and Joe at her house. Um, our last visit was up at my mom and dad's. Okay. And can you describe just for us generally what the sort of you observed in their relationship? There was one time uh, Michelle had invited me over and uh, she was making brownies, or Joe was making brownies, and Mom was coming Actually, after work. Overall, go ahead and finish your answer now. Actually, uh, thank you. Uh, Joe didn't set the timer or check the brownies or something, or they weren't perfect, and she flipped out. And what do you mean by flipped out? She what happened? She just yelled at him like he was just belittled him horribly. He turned red. He was embarrassed. Your Honor, I have to check again. I need to strike. This is irrelevant. The answer stands. I'll sustain the objection to the example. I have another question, Mr. O'Toole. Did you see them together on other occasions? Not a, not a lot. Like it, oh. uh, Do you know whether uh, Joe McEnroe had a driver's license? He did not have one. How do you know that? Michelle. Well, Michelle must have told me. Who did the driving uh, between the two of them? Michelle did. Did you, um, you said you, you hadn't spoken to Michelle Anderson in some months before that, the day before Christmas Eve of 2007. When is the last time that you saw her? Physically saw. Oh, I know it was a real, right there, a good three months before this happened. Um, ah. Oh, I believe it was Mom and I, Joe and Michelle, were up at Mom and Dad's having chips and salsa, and my kids. You were approximately how long before? I'd had to be a good three months. months. When was the last After. time you saw your, your mother? Oh, my mom was just a few days before that this had happened. Can I have just a moment? Sure. Thank 
Good afternoon, Ms. Anderson. I've only got a, a, a few minutes of questions. I just want to ask you a couple of follow-up questions about uh, this conversation that you had with, with Michelle. Uh, I think you were describing a, a drive that you took from Monroe uh, back to Wayne and Judy's house. Is that, is that right? We were going back to Michelle's house. Back to Michelle's house. And that was about three months before the uh, the murders? Yes. Okay. And was that the last Approximately. Time? Approximately. Was that the last time that, that you saw her? It was, I believe it, we had chips and salsa at okay. Mom and Dad's. Okay. And this was after uh, the It was promises. right around that same time. I can't right off this last eight years give you exact, but right around that time. Okay. Um, I just want to ask for a little context of that, that conversation. Uh, I think it took place in the car. My truck, yes. Uh, you said that she she flipped out. Yes. Um, you didn't call the police. I'm with my sister. We're driving. She so, flipped out. She's emotional. You turn around and call the police? This is my little sister. Do you think I thought this was serious? So you didn't think it was serious? No. Uh, is this the first time that she'd uh, ever said something like that? Yes. Was the first time she'd said something like that? Yes. Okay. Um, haven't you been, you, your mom, your dad, been, been worried about Michelle? Worried about Michelle? Mm -hmm. Not sure been, what you're talking about. Have you, you been worried about her mental state? Oh, mental state. We. <sighs> Michelle didn't like people. We tried to, she never, she didn't like people, especially women. Do you remember talking to uh, a detective uh, just a few days after, after the, the murders happened? Detective who? Detective uh, Holland. He was the one when this happened, um, uh, questioned me, and that's yes, I mean, somewhat. So he's pretty numb, pretty out of it. Sure, I, I can imagine. <laughs> no, and you it, can't. It was a long time ago. Uh, oh. Do you remember uh, whether that conversation was was tape recorded? I'm sure it was. Yes, I'm sure it was. Yes. And do you do you recall ever looking at a, a transcript? Of that, of that recording? No, not right now. You don't, you don't recall that anymore? Not right now. Do you recall um, telling Detective Holland that uh, you knew that your sister needed help? No. Defendant's Exhibit 9 is marked for identification only. I'm going to approach her. Sure. I'm going to hand you Defendant's Exhibit 9. Does that look like a, a transcript of uh, your your statement to Detective Pauling? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. I could ask you to turn your uh, turn your to turn to page uh, page three. Off there, it looks like the detective is uh, asking you uh, if you've uh, seen any violent tendencies in Michelle. Okay. And uh, you, you say that, uh, uh, you saw that she lives in her own little world. She thinks the whole world is against her. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that what you? Is that I'm what sure that, this is yes. That's what you told the detective. And then uh, the detective asked you when you first noticed that. I know um, before mom and dad let her live in the mobile on the property, 
She lived in a uh, trailer park in Falls City, uh, Spring Glen. She had a really hard time there. Oh, sorry. Um, and what, what do you want me to answer? Well, I just, uh, you can look up again at page three. Yes, I'm here. Uh, it, it looks like um, you've known it, it says you've known it for a good eight to ten years. Is that what you said? Of this, of course, this is everything I said. Michelle didn't like people. Um, I don't. I don't know. Uh, she just never liked people. She said there'd always be the center of attention. You were referred to uh, a trailer in Fall City. Yes. So she had some problems there. Um, and I think you told Detective Collin that she, in fact, was uh, hiding in her trailer. Come out. I know they had black curtains and something about all the, she thought, yeah, I don't know, nobody liked her. And I can get you to uh, take a look at page nine. Nine, okay. Okay. And it says, I think what your words were is, and she didn't leave the house, she didn't want to go nowhere, she just thought everyone was out to get her and kill her. Uh, uh, we, mm. my mom, my mom, we thought if she was closer to home, the family would pull her out. <coughs> yes. Does that sound like uh, That's true. what you said? Yes. Yes. You also uh, concerned your mom concerned about uh, Michelle getting back on her medications? Yes, we talked about that. It was years before this. But yes, mom wanted to, she loved Michelle. She said she was a baby, our baby, you know, the family baby. Um, so you, you, your mom obviously cared for Michelle a lot. She loved all her kids the same. And, and, and you did as well? Yes. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Read your right. Thank you. You still have exhibit nine there that Mr. Sorensen handed you. <coughs> yes. And I think he told you, uh, oh, you confirmed with him that this was a transcript of a interview that you gave to Detective John Holland in the days following what happened. Christmas time, 2007. Okay. If I could have you turn to uh, page four of that transcript. Yes. If you look about halfway down, you see what the detective asks you if you were helping Mich uh, Michelle with her groceries. Oh, yes. You see that? And you recall what your answer to that was? Yes. What did you tell the detective at that time? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay, so, yeah, um, so you were helping her with groceries. Okay. Uh, let me keep reading. I don't have my glasses. I can see it. And all of a sudden, she... well, let me ask this differently because it's kind of hard to hear you okay. here. <clears throat> did you talk to Detective Holland and answer that question about and she'll be coming uh, distant from the family. Yes. And did you men uh, did you mention to Detective Holland uh, in that answer that she talked about killing your father? Go ahead and take a look at that answer if you need to. The only time she ever said that was when she at one time. So I'm going to read it, and all of a sudden she'll be talking to me, and she yeah, this would be it. She'll talk to my mom. Oh, yes. 
This is that one incident. What do you tell Detective Holland about that incident? I'm sure. That statement? Everything it says, I, I said. Did you tell him that, quote, she just wanted to kill him and she was the spoiled one, unquote? Very true. What did that mean? <sighs> she was a spoiled, rotten brat. I was the one brought up for him. I was the oldest. <laughs> Let me have you refer to the next page in page five. You see that there? And again, we're looking at exhibit nine. Okay. And you see where the detective asked, quote, had she said things like that repeatedly in the past? Do you see that question? I'm on page five. I'm about halfway down. No, she hadn't. No, no, no. Oh, My question is, do you, do you see the detective's question? <laughs> Where, you, where the detective says, has she said things like that repeatedly in the I see the question. And your answer, quote, she has always said that she'd kill my dad. Huh. And I hate mom. She hates my she mom's mom. mom. My gammy. She said all that that day. I forgot my gammy, my grandma. Now, if I have you look at the bottom of page six of, of, of what's the oh. mark for identification. Okay. 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 <laughs> You see the very last, the last answer on that page where it says, witness, quote, she just started freaking out. I hate them. Yeah. I hate them. I want to kill them. And then she brought up the will thing. Yeah. I thought, yes. my goodness, unquote. This was that whole thing. She did bring that up, yes. Do you remember what the will thing was that she brought up? Not all the details, but whatever this says. I don't lie, so it's in here. I don't remember everything, but I told my mom right away. And I know it's in her diaries. If I could have you look at page 10 of Exhibit 9. Okay. And you see the fourth line down where the detective asks you, quote, okay, so describe her relationship with, uh, with your mother and father and stepfather, unquote. I'm oh, sorry. You're okay. I mean, I I'm ready. You see that question there? Describe your her relationship with your mother and father and stepfather. Do you see that question? It's about four lines down or four entries down. Page ten, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. You see that? Does, Wait, read it one more time. Does oh, the detective? You okay. So describe her relationship with uh, your mother and father and yes, stepfather. Yes, I see that. And you answered that quote, she deep down from all of her words hated him. Mm -hmm. um, my mom, my mom would just do everything for her and she tried to control my mom. Yes. She is a controller, unquote. Yes. What was it, why did you say that? She has always been, even when she was a little girl, she had to be the boss, Every everything. She had, even our birthday parties, she wants this there. She's just always had to be in control. I don't know why. Okay, you turn to page 12 of Exhibit 9. Can we that? Yes, I'm here. About halfway down, here. the detective asks, quote, was she, did, did, was it to the point where your parents were going to tell her she had to pay rent? You see that question? Said, yes. You know, I would object to this yes. beyond the scope of the this is all examination. Oh, go ahead. And your answer was yes, and she knew it. You see that? Yes. And then the next question is, did she, did that conversation come up recently? And you answered, quote, I know it did. My mom kept saying she's going to have to start paying, and she just ignored mm -hmm. the family. Mm -hmm. This is exactly how this is Why exactly. did you answer that that way? What, oh. what were you thinking? I know it did. My mom kept saying she's going to have to start paying, which is true. And she just, and she did start ignoring all of us. It was about three months. What what did you ask me? What did I say? Yeah. When when is it that you you learned that she was going to have to start paying rent? You know, all this was recent. Um, it was around the same time she flipped out. I and it's. I don't, I don't have an exact date, but it was not too far before she did this. Let me ask you if I could have you look at the next page, page 13. 
Okay. And about six entries down, the detective asks, quote, how do you know she's been planning it? Describe that for me. You see that question? Yes, I see it. And what was your answer there? The only thing I knew is when she did this ordeal in my truck. Did you say to the detective, said it's quote, she has said this before, you know, I wish they were dead. She and, did say that. And, and just when we were talking, she wanted to make sure Scott was out of the will. She did say something like that. That's it, exactly. And she's just jealous of everyone. And yes. Is that your answer? Yes. I'm on page four. I'll just put that there. Move it a little. Yes, I'm on page four. All right. So about uh, midway down the page, uh, Mr. O'Toole read you uh, a quote from from your words, and I think what he read was, um, uh, oh. so I think what he read is because she came out and said, "I told my mom. I hope my mom told my dad I'm going to kill him. She just wanted to kill him, and she was the spoiled one." Uh, there's there's some more language in that answer above that, right? I'm on page four, and is it right here? Right in the middle. Okay, all right. Your whole, your whole answer was, and all of a sudden, she just quit talking to me. Yes. And she'd close in. She wouldn't talk to my mom. But coming when she was with me, when I left, we were leaving for Dennis's, yes. Michelle and I, and she'd just go into this trance. Because she came out and said, I told my mom, I hope my mom told my dad I'm going to kill him. She just wanted to kill him. She was the squirrel one. That's, that's everything the whole I said is everything that happened. That's the whole the whole answer you gave to. to if the, it's on here, question. yes. Okay. You've already testified that you did not call call the police following this conversation that took place in your truck. No. Uh, did, do, do you know if? Uh, your, your mother or your father called uh, the police or a crisis line or, or any anything like that. No, they nobody. Um, my mom probably didn't mention it to my dad right away. I don't know, but I told my mom immediately. When I dropped her off. And so you don't know if there, there was any follow-up. I know they didn't call anybody. Yes, I do know they did not call anybody. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Any further questions? If I might, um, yeah. Ms. Anderson, I apologize to, to ask you more questions. Um, I think you answered in response to my questions on direct examination and Mr. Sorensen's on cross-examination that you didn't think or you didn't know whether your sister was serious when she said she wanted to kill her parents or kill her father. If I really thought my sister, I, I, no, you don't think it's somebody's, your family's going to kill your family. So no, I did not think it was serious. She was angry. That isn't normal. But let me ask you: on the, really? on the day that all this happened, or that was, this was discovered on December 26, 2007, you talked about you recall talking to Detective Holland. Yes. He's the one who told you what happened. Yes. Did you say to Detective Holland the first thing? Quote: It was Michelle, wasn't it? Yes. Why? I. My parents had no enemies. Everybody loved all of them. Thank you. Anything further, Mr. Sorensen? No, yeah. Right, thank you very much, man. Can I go? Thank you. I don't want any. It's all mixed up. 
You want this? You want the pictures? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Mr. O'Toole, are there any other witnesses you wish to start on today, or do you want to take, take up tomorrow where you left off? Maybe take up tomorrow, that's all I have to Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, please leave your notepads and uh, pens on the chairs there. I'm going to excuse you in the jury room. Kenya will be releasing you for the evening momentarily. Please uh, don't discuss.